FlyNow is a company that developed a modular eVTOL family, electric vertical takeoff and landing. We call it e-copter as it is more a smart electric helicopter. With this modular eVTOL family, we really want to revolutionize 3D mobility, to bring a solution for an urban environment and to take out the traffic from the ground into the sky. Welcome to Let's Talk About Tech. It's my great pleasure to introduce you today to Yvonne Winter, co-founder and COO of FlyNow. Welcome. Thank you for having me, Bertolt. It's a great pleasure. I'm always learning when I meet you, so I'm very curious about this talk. I'm also looking forward. Um, it's great having you here with uh, your entrepreneurial journey that drove you into the aviation industry of <laughs> autonomous flying vehicles. We'll get there. But where's the starting point? How did Yvonne become an entrepreneur? <laughs> Thank you for the question. And first of all, it's not autonomous, it's automatically, but we are coming to that later. So I grew up in a typical German SME and uh, every evening on the dinner Uh, table. We had the discussions and I followed my parents. So this is an evolutionary journey that I took. And um, yeah, then um, I started economy and I worked for different other companies. Then seven years in the company of my parents, uh, they do uh, logistics and wholesale. And uh, there I got a lot of experience. And as my parents um, always <laughs> bought new companies, uh, my job was to integrate them. So my job was to do the reorganization and to implement and um, to set a structure that we can grow. And so my passion is really growing companies. And since 15 years, I started to found my own companies, to co-found or to found companies. And actually, yeah, that's how I ended up in Fly Now Aviation. And uh, I met Jürgen, the founder and the technical head behind uh, the venture. Um, and he helped me actually in doing some calculations for my last startup. And uh, there we found out that we can work together quite well. And that's why, uh, yeah. The, the result was to start this venture. And technology is really at core super important for your business, right? It's a hardware yeah. business Absolutely. with a lot of artificial intelligence on the software side. Absolutely. Explain us a little bit in a few sentences, what is Fly Now? You're founded in 2019? Correct. If I'm not mistaken? Yes. What is Fly Now? FlyNow is a company that developed a modular eVTOL family, electric vertical takeoff and um, landing. We call it e-copter as it is more a, a smart electric helicopter than a drone. And actually, pi per definition, it's not a drone. A drone is if you have more than two rotor blades. So we have only two rotor blades. And this has uh, actually a huge advantage when it comes to certification because we can rely on existing regulations like CSVLR for very light rotorcraft, CS27 for helicopter. So we don't need to wait till um, the regulations for uh, electric vertical takeoff and landings is issued by EASA. And uh, therefore we have a predefined certification route aligned with Austro control and as well uh, with EASA. And so with this modular eVTOL family, we really want to revolutionize 3D mobility. So um, to bring a solution for an urban environment and to take out the traffic from the ground into the sky. So in meantime, or, or like in, in, in how, how long will it take for me to take the first flight? Are, are we talking 10 years, 20 years, or are we talking five years? Uh, we are talking five years. 
<laughs> wow, that, that, that's so amazing. So you're exactly on the point. Uh, from, from the development side, so end of 2022, already we got the first certification uh, certification milestone issued in specific category sale two. That means we um, could uh, start the testings last year under EASA rules already. This was at Salzburg Airport. Um, and now, uh, one month ago, we started the serious development of the cargo version. Um, this will then take now 28 months till the start of the series production. Then we will produce cargo, which is capable to transport 200 kilogram in the size of a Euro pallet um, for two years. When we then have a couple of hundred thousand flights with the cargo version, we start the production of the single and the twin seater. So for one passenger and for two passengers. So it's approximately almost five years. Wow, amazing. And uh, the, the cargo then uh, can be shipped over what kind of distance? Are we talking Vienna to Salzburg or? Uh, Not quite. <laughs> okay. So uh, we have a range of 50 kilometer plus 25 kilometer extra for security reasons. Um, and later on, we will have a hydrogen fuel cell solution as well, uh, with, uh, which allows us a range extension up to 100 or more kilometer. Um, we can go a speed up to 130 kilometer per hour uh, and can transport 200 kilogram payload, uh, mm -hmm. either the passengers or the cargo. Um, and what is very special about our development that we have only 55 dBA in an altitude of 150 meter. So this is the sound level of a dishwasher. Wow. And what we measured uh, last year uh, at our tests that when we run on full RPM for the takeoff, uh, we have 73 dBA um, in eight meters distance. So it's um, you can imagine when you stand on a sidewalk and a car is passing by with 50 kilometer, this is the same uh, sound level. Uh, the average sound level in a city uh, is between 60 and 65 dB. That's impressive. Um, yes, come, this coming, will set the benchmark. Come, come, <laughs> coming back a little bit to this, and may, maybe you solve it by answering my, my next question. Um, Austria is the country of hidden champions. It looks like you're working on the next <laughs> hidden champion, right? Absolutely. Um, you're German, right? And you decided to actually start this company in Salzburg in Austria. Um, is this because Austria and Poland are leading in, in drone regulations or that, that, did that not matter too much since you're not a drone actually? You are on the spot. <laughs> exactly. This is the reason. So um, in Germany, it's a bit different. Uh, there, there is the country and then um, uh, the, the, um, like, like Bavaria and everyone has its own um, kind of entities. And uh, in Austria, you have Austro control and there they do air traffic management. They do the regulations. So everything is under one umbrella. And as you mentioned, they are leading when it comes to the drone regulations uh, in Europe. They actually founded their own drone competence center. Mm -hmm. And so before we even founded the company, Jürgen Greil, our CEO, went to Austria Control, showed them our concept. And when they said it, we like it, we support you, then we founded the company. Impressive. And also the suppliers, I would assume, um, are quite favorable for your industry. There's a lot absolutely. of high tech companies in that field of aviation. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, with the location in Salzburg, we are in the center of our tier one suppliers. We have tier one suppliers for every component from the automotive industry. Mm -hmm. And this is very important uh, because we want to bring the cost down to a level so that the broad, broad public can afford it. Okay. Um, and by applying automotive processes and having tier one suppliers from the automotive industry, and they are at the same time capable to do aero parts, um, we can really, first of all, scale up very fast and um, have a high cost efficiency. 
And um, the next thing that we apply from the automotive industry is that we share the same components for the different derivatives. So the same rotor blades, the same e-motor, the same batteries, the same harnesses for all the different derivatives for the cargo version, for the single mm -hmm. seater and for the twin seater. Very cool, impressive. What I've learned um, when, when we met in Dubai, actually, yeah. is that your go-to-market strategy is highly linked to the Middle East. Yes. How, how does that work? You're, uh, you're close with the regulators here in the European Union. You're developing with your suppliers here, but your go-to-market strategy is deep into Saudi Arabia and, and United uh, Arab Emirates. That's correct, yeah. Um, the reason is, so first of all, the people there are very friendly, very open. Um, they have a high affinity to technological developments. They have a very healthy demography. So uh, younger people, they are very well educated. And um, the most important thing is that the governments are really pushing towards implementation of these new um, low altitude economy. So this is a new expression that came up because um, people all over the world re realized that this is the new means of transport and therefore they created this low altitude economy um, word. But yes, they are very uh, ambitious. They are very supportive. They know that they need to invest in the infrastructure and in the regulations so that the implementation of the devices is possible. Impressive. And on the, on the software side, I assume you have a lot of challenges. I know you work a lot with artificial intelligence. Everybody's talking about artificial intelligence <laughs> yeah. these days. Some people are scared of the artificial intelligence. Others uh, just use ChatGPT and think that's it. Um, how are you applying artificial intelligence and in what multiple different ways? Yeah, that's a very good question, and this has a different dimensions. So, um, first of all, uh, when it comes to our application, we are not going for autonomous approach. We are going for an automatic approach, like uh, you can imagine, like an autopilot. And in a predefined route, we go from waypoint to waypoint. Um, It, the reason behind is, is for autonomous flight, you have to have at least 70 to 90 percent real data. That's actually why Tesla is worth so much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And no one has this data. And uh, the second reason is that the air authorities all over the world are very conservative and they have all right to be um, because everything is about security. And no air authority in the world currently wants an uh, autonomous approach. Mm -hmm. So there needs to be a bridging technology between the piloted flight and the autonomous flight, which is automatic flight, like an autopilot, um, like it's known in the aviation now for decades. So you don't have a pilot on board, right. but then on the ground. Right. In addition. Right. Okay. Uh, more or less. So there is a control station. And there is air traffic management and air traffic management, they do, uh, they file the flight plan. So they check NOTAMs, weather and everything. Then uh, they give it to air traffic control. When air traffic control approves the flight, then the vehicle is pre-programmed in this route. And the moment it takes off, air traffic control, meaning the government or the air authorities in this case, take over. And by this approach, we make sure that Only the government is in control of their airspace. Impressive. Um, but uh, coming back to your question, artificial intelligence, the yeah. other dimension is then the operation. Mm -hmm. um, this was the, the for the vehicle and for the operation. You can imagine that uh, later on when there are thousand Uh, vehicles, air vehicles in the defined airspace at the same time simultaneously, there has to be AI in order to observe to control. So it will be smaller mm -hmm. drones, um, like for, for video purposes, for delivering small stuff and things like that. Then there will be the emerging, uh, emergency helicopters and um, 
other applications, and then there will be the eVTOLs mm -hmm. uh, or as well the piloted helicopters. So we have different vehicles using the same airspace or of course, it will be divided in use spaces, but mm -hmm. they have to take off uh, and, and land and so forth in the same space. Mm -hmm. So you have to have some kind of coordination. And in order to reduce the human factor, it's very, very vital to have AI uh, who um, to have AI applications in order to coordinate that. Mm -hmm. I know there's massive uh, EU projects in that field. I'm invested yeah. actually in a company called Unmanned Life. They're mm -hmm. orchestrating autonomous drones and robots so on the ground and in the air, mm -hmm. um, mostly for automizations in harbors or to, to do surveillance on, on assets like, I don't know, nuclear power plants uh, yeah. in, in, a, in, a, in a certain country uh, or reforestation in Canada is, is one of those use cases. Um, but this obviously is, 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 uh, is a great point that you mentioned that all these different vehicles, right? The automatic ones, the ones that still have yeah. pilots and the fully autonomous, smaller and bigger drones um, will, will actually be in the next big challenge in, in air mobility. Absolutely. Yeah? Absolutely. And for this reason, um, we founded an alliance called Sky Alliance for Advanced Air Mobility, mm -hmm. um, together with an air traffic uh, management company, uh, infrastructure company doing word reports, uh, and, and as well insurance, another OEM, so that we join forces in order uh, to develop a turnkey solution for the mm -hmm. implementation of this uh, 3D mobility. And uh, this we coordinate then with, uh, with this alliance we coordinate then with government bodies and with different stakeholders from the country um, and with a step-by-step -step approach uh, starting with a sandbox where we tried it out where we do mm -hmm. the first legs and the first implementation and use cases then step-by-step -step, uh, go into a commercial use mm -hmm. and um you can imagine this like an, a, Mer a merlin experiment you mm -hmm. have you heard of this expression mm -hmm. So uh, you, you have to backwards engineer that. So mm -hmm. you know where, uh, where you want to go and what is the end result. The end result is an autonomous approach, which is highly integrated. Um, and at the beginning, maybe uh, someone just starts with small drone or with piloted, uh, but you have to see the whole path and where mm -hmm. you want to be. And from there on, you have to develop the regulations for the operations in order to later on really have the full picture. It's the same mm. like in the automotive industry 100 years ago. I mean, mm. um, perhaps you remember the Red Flag Act uh, where someone right. with a red flag needed to go in front of a car. And then we had horse carriages and we had cars at the same time and accidents and problems and uh, a lot of chaos. Uh, now we could learn from that and uh, establish a system that allows integration of all the different kind of air vehicles um, for, for the for the long term mm. it seems it seems like women are driving the innovation and mobility um, I was just thinking of Bertha Benz right um, <laughs> thanks to her I think a lot of things change to the good in in the car. Uh, space. Um, it was so the technological development are usually the men and the women <laughs> are pushing for it to to yeah. bring it into life. Yeah. Right, and to bring it into the markets. Yeah, I'm very much looking forward to my first flight. I want to take a test seat. I know you're joining World Venture Forum this year, and That's we will true. actually have one of your devices there. Uh, yes. This this is going to be amazing. Please join us at World Venture Forum. Um, subscribe to this channel, and uh, yeah. Watch this video maybe a couple of times. There were a lot of interesting details on regulations of the aviation industry. Um, it's great to see an upcoming new hidden champion. And uh, it's great also to see that you are using the market that has the biggest growth story of our time, the Middle Thank East, you. to start in. Uh, a market that I like a lot, where we are also focused in growing into. Um, so I'm very much looking forward to seeing you again, and I will follow your journey, and I hope you guys do as well. Take care. Bye-bye. Great. Thank you so much.